Right, we're in business. We are in business. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the channel and to Fallout New Vegas. You join me here at the fort where everybody's still talking about the burn man non-stop because that's all they seem to True do and say that. Um, we've had some safe file corruption issues as well. Um, um, Got stuck on uh, the loading screen so I had to do a bit of messing about to kind of get <laughs> back into the game but we're here now so um, Caesar has just told us we need to go and destroy the Brotherhood of Steel um, who are all the way over here in Hidden Valley so I think Gene Skydiving might be a good um, place to travel from and I should pick up all my gear Yep, on the way out so we can get ourselves nice and set up for um <laughs> cattle prod. I forgot I still had that. Um so yeah we can get ourselves nice and set up for um oh my armor is bad. Let's switch to the uh and the armored vault 13 jumps so it'll do for now. We're only going into Hidden Valley. Um, so yeah, we're heading for Hidden Valley. Um, not too much in this area that's a, a big problem for us. Um, <clears throat> some powder ganger camps. I think the powder gangers are kind of okay with me. Anyway, I haven't really done anything to offend them. Oh, never mind. Apparently I have. Right, that's fine. I mean, it's not going to help you. Um, Crimson Camera Vanguard. Oh, leather armour. That'll help to repair my uh, other armour. A little bit. Um, oh yeah, this is, uh, I think they attacked a caravan here. Please, and today's physician, that might come in handy. I don't need a clipboard. Are you guys going to turn and attack me too? Because I am prepared to kill the lot of you. If that's what I have to do. No, we're okay. Cool, we're okay. So yeah, it looks like these guys might have attacked a um, caravan from the Crimson Caravan. That always seems to happen though that like you got there and those the two guys that are there turn hostile but then the other two guys run in and aren't hostile. It's very weird. Um, I'm guessing this is the the Brahmin. Okay, so to save me just wandering and um trying to get enough experience to up my science skill to the max. Um, what I've done is um, uh, essentially my character has just gone and done a massive crash course in science and got a degree very quickly. That's that's what happened. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've just used console commands just to kind of set it up. So. Um, just to show you the way to do this um, so that you don't have to go farting about um, with stealing keepers. Listen very closely and do as I say. Your life depends on it. And over everything you're carrying. Weapons, ammo, clothes, armor, everything. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. want you stripped down and... I've told you what to do. Fine. Take it all off and hand it to me. Then come inside and through the door at the rear of the chamber. Paladin Ramos is waiting for you. Okay. 
How the hell did you get in here? Normally I would have already <laughs> shot you, but I'm under orders to bring you to the Elder. Will you come peacefully? See, this makes no sense. Like, the whole thing is that you walk into the bunker and you could very easily just be somebody that's wandering and exploring and you've just stumbled across this place and then they come out the door, drag you in and say, come and meet Paladin Ramos and then Ramos is like, how the hell did you get in here? And it's like, well, you're people dragged me in here against my will like that's how if you didn't open the door and come out and drag me in <laughs> just makes no sense uh fine okay i'll take you to him like, follow me you know Mostly, it, it's that kind shot. of thing of like oh we don't let people in and why are you here how did you get in here like you, you brought me in like the door's very firmly locked so it's not like it's easy to come in you know, and, and to break in. So you brought me here and then asked me how I got in here. And <laughs> how did you find us, stranger? And do tell the truth. Uh, just... Accident or no. Yeah. We both now find ourselves in an uncomfortable situation. You took an extreme risk in coming here. My policy towards trespassers has not been lenient. Again, the security I be of this in the bunker, bunker is my you foremost well, concern, but, you know, and like... I take pains to minimize our exposure topside. For this reason, I might be interested in contracting with an outsider, an NCR. Okay, fine. Very well. I'll. Paladin Ramos will escort you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are not free to carry the secret. Of... I know. To you're underscore put an this point, you'll be fitted with because, an explosive collar. You know... well, You'll find your equipment in the chest to your right. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know how it goes. But yeah, it's just, it's that kind of thing that they're just like, oh, how did you get in here? Like, you, you brought me in. You dragged me in here, like... That's how I got in. Maybe, uh... <laughs> you know, if you don't want people coming into your bunker, room open the door and drag them into your bunker like ah, I don't know it's just it's, it's just a bit weird it's, it's just like makes no sense oh something weird is happening with the bark scorpions they're like stretched through the ground oh that's weird right where's this bunker Oh wait, is that still the... Uh, yeah, it's still the quest marker telling me um, to destroy them, but I can't freely roam around in there until I do this. Um, job for for them. Um, and yeah, the... I mean, the whole part, like, this version of the Brotherhood, it, it's all just very strange, is he here? Oh yeah, he's gonna be aggressive to Oh, I need a better gun. He's actually got some pretty decent armour on. stood there and Take all your ammo. 
Like, there wasn't any way I was going to be able to talk him down because, um, unfortunately, I'm shooting on site with the NCR. Which, if you're doing season two, you know, you're going to do at this point. I suppose the other option would have been to go and get Veronica. But I'd feel bad if she then ended up leading to the demise of the rest of the bur Brotherhood by letting me into the bunker. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave uh, leave Veronica alone. Um, we'll talk about her at some point. I would like to do a series in the future about the different companions and some of the other kind of major characters and their backstories and things because there, there's just there's so many interesting stories and in follow it's it's really really good right let me in oh stand back from the door the elders eager to hear your report okay so i had the key for that um yeah as it's all a wee bit bizarre because i have the key for the door but as soon as you walk in they come out to meet you how did you resolve the situation with the ranger He's dead. How do you know he won't be missed? That other rangers won't come looking for him? Or NCR patrols? Did you just make matters worse? Uh, yeah, that. It was calculated risk asking questions when I tipped him off. So, you weighed the value of confirming if his location was known against your advantage of surprise. All right. Since you completed your assigned task, I... There. That's better, I hope. Stop by the command room when you can. Um, so, you know, Someone it's like we're going to destroy the Brotherhood, and it's like, back. okay, fine. Um, so, you know, I mean, you can just basically come in and shoot everybody. Um, that is an option, um, but you have to be fairly... Um, well equipped in order to succeed because you know the, the Brotherhood are pretty tough. There's quite a lot of them here. A lot of them are wearing power armour um, which gives them quite a lot of resistances. Um, apparently I can't even interact with any of this. Um, so you know it, it's not easy to fight your way through here. Someone blew up the monorail the NCR uses to travel to the strip and back. We should use this time to strike. Sure. Um, but yeah, so you come in here and you do the self-destruct thing. And they'll turn on you and they'll fire on you, which makes sense. So they're obviously angry that you have set up the self-destruct for the bunker. But the thing about it is, is that like you have time, even though they're shooting at you, you still have time to escape the bunker and you can just leave before it blows. But none of them do that. Like they, they all just like they know it's happening, there's alarms blaring the whole time and they know you've done it. So why why? You know, that that's the kind of thing, it's like, why would you stay in a... a building that, you know, is going to... Um, that's, that's going to blow up, because, you, you know, you've got this self-destruct mechanism that, you know, has been activated, and yet they just sit there and let it happen I just, I, you know it's it's kind of strange I mean I, say, I think I said this before but it, it you know that that's really quite odd behavior because you know anywhere that you go you know whether it's your like place of work or whether it's you know at school um, and they have like a fire safety protocol that you have to learn where um, it's like okay if the fire alarm goes off you do this, you don't do that and you go to this place and this is the meeting point and this is who's in charge of making sure everybody's accounted for, you know you have a fire marshal kind of assigned all that kind of stuff. Um, that's 
quite funny that infiltration is the one. Um, you know, and like, because I mean, when I worked as a vet, every practice that I worked in, we had fire protocols, including protocols on what to do with the animals because as as much as you know this might upset some people human life takes priority in these situations it always takes priority um which means that you know we were only allowed to take animals out of the practice if it was safe to do so um so you know dogs on elite elite small animals like cats and stuff and carriers if it's safe to do so but if it's not safe then you have to leave them um, and if an animal was under the anaesthetic, then we just had to turn up the anaesthetic and leave them so that they wouldn't suffer. And it's it's horrible, but at the same time, you know, it's like human life takes kind of priority. Um, but also, every person in that organisation has a responsibility to make sure they're safe. So, you know, making sure that they're not doing anything that could cause a fire and making sure that they know what to do in the event of a fire and do what they're supposed to do in the event of a fire alarm going off or something. Um, it's something that I remember, um, you know, back in my <laughs> really um, university days, um, one of the things, um, so our exams were in the... Um, at Glasgow University in the big... Um, oh crap, I've got to pick a, <laughs> a perk. Let's see. Um, language. Could be useful. Terrifying presence. That's fun, actually. You know what, I'm about to escape the uh, Brotherhood bunker and they're all going to be shooting at me, so I think uh, let's get toughness. Um, because they are going to be mad. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like one of my the kind of fondest memories is... Um, <laughs> the, that one of the kind of security men from the university uh, at the beginning of every exam um, would go through the fire safety um, regulations because these the, the rooms where the exams were held were not um, used routinely for like lectures and stuff. Yep, bye guys. Oh, it's getting a bit low. Hello. There we go. Um, and so, and it was always the same man um, that, that did the fire safety chat um, before every exam and he was so funny because he's like, I don't want to worry you and I don't want to alarm you, but if the fire alarm goes off, this is what to do. Um, and it was always the same man, we Glaswegian man, and it was it was great, we, we all thought it was funny, of course it never ever happened, um, but <laughs> when, uh, you just open the pit one. Um, but one of our, um, our graduation ceremony, um, it was in the same place, um, at the main part of the university. Actually, the sandstorm fades away because presumably we've destroyed whatever creates it, and then you'll see black smoke coming out of all the vents. Um, so, you know, graduation ceremony, same wee man went through the whole process um, with us. We were all sitting there obviously with uh, and our parents and family members and things. Um, and then, <laughs> sure enough, final arm goes off. <laughs> um, and we all had to evacuate and we had such a laugh with it, about it just because this wee man has been talking about, talking us through the fire, um, what to do when the final arm goes off in that part of the university. Um, oh, what's that? Oh, no. I'm trying the one that's actually about to sing me. Somebody is firing a ghost rifle at me. Hi, I'm getting 
I'm really keen on the label for this. Uh, <laughs> Why am I wheezy? Am I getting this? Oh wait. Got some stupid pin, pin men to deal with. And most impacts. This is this this is uh, this is fun. Can you stop doing that? Please. Ah! What's happening? That's the thing, Bart scorpions aren't as dangerous as the red scorpions are because their pen does this. And I'm really not liking the double vision to be honest. It was all bark scorpions, I think, and then just one brotherhood guy. <laughs> okay. Anyway, all that drama over with. Um, uh, that's really. Uh, that hurts my face. Do you have. Yeah, so the red scorpion, uh, bark scorpions aren't as dangerous, but they definitely make one noisy. And I did the lights all just for okay. Things are getting very weird. Um, but anyway, yeah. okay. As I was saying, um, yeah. So it was really, really funny, but it just seems mad to me that you know you literally you go in there, you set off the self destruct sequence, and you have time to escape. So. If you have time to escape, so do they, but they don't, they just stay there and it just seems really strange to me that they wouldn't like, try and follow you or something, I, I, I don't know. Like, it would make way more sense um, if you could, I don't know, rig it so that you could access it remotely so they don't know that you've done it until and then you can get out but maybe if they catch you in the act then they'll attack I, I don't know it all just seems a bit strange but anyway we've done the job killed by order of Kaisar all visitors yeah, I know. must um, you're so we've killed 40 million bark scorpions and one brotherhood paladin and then obviously killed all the rest of the brotherhood in the bunker which is very sad but not really I don't know it just it doesn't make sense especially I mean the brotherhood in this game they're not in a good situation they're, they're you know they've, they've lost their numbers due to losing Helios 1 to the NCR they, their elder, Father Elijah, the previous elder, left them with a big pile of shit to deal with, um, and... True to Kaiser. Yeah. Um, so it just seems really strange that they would then, you know, just, if they know that their self-destruct mechanism is uh, going off, A, why isn't there an option to cancel it, and B, why, if that wasn't an option, then why would they just sit there and let it happen and not escape or evacuate or anything? It, it's just very strange. It's very strange. So uh, it does feel like then to destroy the Brotherhood, it's fairly easy to do and quite contrived. 
um, that that's how it works. That oh. you just go in and set off the self destruct, which they know they know you did it, even if you're completely hidden. They know you did it. So yeah. Anyway, we have succeeded. Has Hello, the brotherhood Kaiser. been destroyed? And they have. Very well. This latest victory brings to a close my efforts to reshape the power balance of the Mojave. And not a minute too soon. I want you to join me in my tent. You okay. and I are going to have a private conversation. Uh, okay. Caesar's Legion likes me. And that feels good. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Okay. All right, let's state the obvious. There's something wrong with me. Yep. The headaches started a couple of months ago. They weren't too bad at first, but now they come frequently and they're debilitating. Mm -hmm. For the past two weeks, my left leg has been dragging. It's stiffer, hard to move. And you've seen me blank out. Lucia says I stare into space, blink a few times, then keep talking like nothing happened. So what's the diagnosis? Um, I would... <laughs> that's probably not the thing but that sounds kind of convincing but yeah medicine 50 I'm afraid your symptoms are consistent with a brain lesion most likely a tumour I figured as much congratulations you just became my personal physician do you have what you need to treat my condition um Then gather the tools you need and study up on your medical skills. Okay. When you're confident you can perform the operation, hurry back. I don't know how long I've got. Okay. It's never had a functional diagnostic scanning module. It's tumor brute. Without that, it's, it's useless for surgery. Brute. It's been said that the autodocs were standard equipment in the underground vaults where mankind survived when the bombs fell centuries ago. You can search the vaults. But every auto dock my legion has run across has been stripped for parts long before we found it. Some of my scouts did report an abandoned vault near Nellis Air Force Base. Overrun by ghouls, they said. Maybe the infestation has been there long enough to keep scavengers out. Why don't you go and see? Okay, let's see what I can do. Do that, and try not to take too long. Yeah, so now Caesar trusts us enough to sort of be upfront about what's going on with them. Um, although we've noticed the, the kind of signs and things um, when we've been speaking to him the last couple of conversations we've had with him. Oh, wait. True to Kaiser. Um, where he's been getting headaches and he's been having sort of episodes where he kind of blanks out, which is what's called absence seizures. Um, and it's just like somebody switches him off um, for a few minutes and then he comes back on again and everything and it's like nothing happened and he's complaining that you know his leg is dragging and not moving um, because the thing about brain tumours especially is that the brain controls every function in the body and depending on where the tumour is and what parts of the brain it's pushing on and putting pressure on or damaging um, you know, a variety of symptoms can manifest, um, but you know, having surgery, especially the ability to do brain surgery in the Maha in the wasteland, is obviously quite difficult. So it starts this uh, quest, Itchimer Brute. So um, one of the there's a few options for completing this quest. So we can get a functional diagnostic scanner um, for the autodoc, which means going into vault. 34, which is where the boomers came from, um, which is a particularly nasty vault, it's full of ghouls um, because there was a radiation leak, so um, the majority of the vault dwellers that were left behind there ended up um, becoming ghouls and there is, there's other quests that involve vault, vault 34 as well. Um, we can get the appropriate medicine skills to, to do the surgery ourselves, as well as getting some surgical tools. Um, or another option is actually that we can get 
um, Arcade Ganon to come, but Arcade does not like the idea oh. of helping with Caesar. He does not like Caesar. Um, so that's uh, another option. So I think um, what we'll do is we'll do the surgery ourselves um, because there's a couple of things that would be interesting to. Yeah, I'd quite like to demonstrate um, a couple of different things that you can do. Um, okay, so I can um, so we can get the surgical tools from the New Vegas Medical Clinic. get our medicine skill up. Well actually that's quite handy that I picked up with today's physician. So head over to the New Vegas Medical Clinic and get the surgical tools um, anyway, and there's about 34 on the map now, but... Well, the slaves have been... Um, yeah, just because there's an interesting um, situation which is quite funny, um, because this quest, you know, having gained enough trust with Caesar to, to get to this point, um, to doing this quest and Wait, where's the Morning. lady? Um, that we can um, kill Caesar but also keep working with the um, Legion anyway if we can convince Lucius that... Welcome to the New Vegas Medical Clinic. Um, I'm a fully qualified physician purpose. and can fix whatever is wrong with you for a reasonable fee. If you've got the caps, I... Um, do you sell anything? I have reserved a small part of my supplies for sale. The profits go directly to the purchase of additional supplies to help the less fortunate. That is good. Let me see. Very well. Um, so... We've got plenty of doctors back. Surgical tools. Um, Morning. Hi. Let's head into Freeside then, actually, because I think you can get the Wasteland Doctor fatigues, um, and a lot of the thugs that attack you in Freeside seem to wear them. That might give us what we need. To um, you know, with that and uh, to lose position should be enough for us to um, ah, no weapon effects. Come on. Obviously I'm like, oh yeah, let's do that because they might have the, the Wasteland Doctor fatigues and obviously none of them do. But I feel like it is quite common for them to have those. Oh. Perfect. Right. I do. Um, so that one. And my rebreather. It's a wee bit of damage resistance. So now we've got the skills and the tools we need to do some surgery on our bestest friend in the world, Kaiser. 
So. By order of Kaisar, all visit. Your belonging. Our way. True to Kaisar. I'd like to show. Um, in this run through, I'm not going to actually kill Caesar, oh, but I think it'd be interesting to, to show you what happens when you do. So let's make a new save. Kaisar sleeps, but doesn't awaken. Hmm. I fear it is only a matter of days before death claims him. You will answer to me until such a time as Kaisar is able to resume leadership. Okay. That's fine. Wale. Yep. So, yeah, by the time you get back, Caesar is uh, not doing well, so let's... Some of the slaves have been spreading stories about the burned man. Yeah. Right. So, yep, Caesar is asleep. So, um, Caesar or Caesar is in a coma and is near death. Only an operation to remove the tumor from his brain will save him. You have both a set of surgical tools and a doctor's bag. Whether it will be enough to save um, a medicine of 75 or greater is required. So, we can. Perform the operation or arrange for him to die during the surgery. So let's see. What happens. Oh, oh no. Kaisar is dead. At your hands. This crime cannot go unpunished. So understandably, Lucius is angry. Um, so you can say that, which is kind of mad because you've just literally killed Caesar. Um, but you can also use speech and say. Kaisar would be dead if I didn't try to help him. How dare you blame me for trying to save his life? Or you can say the cranial, cranial bleeding was too much for a man of his age, a younger man would have lived. Or you can lie and say I did all I could. Um, and this one, the medicine check, it makes sense because one thing and anybody that's ever had any kind of surgery or anaesthetic or has a pet that's had to under, undergo surgery um, or anaesthesia is that there's always a risk um, you know, even I have occasionally even seen, you know, a six month old perfectly fit and healthy kitten that took a bad reaction to anaesthetic and didn't make it. it it's rare, but it happens. Um, and, you know, I've seen situations where I had, you know, there's a dog that was in for routine uterine but continued to had a lot of bleeding problems, and it turns out that. The dog actually had a previously undiagnosed um, blood clotting disorder, um, which we had no reason to know about because she was young and she was otherwise fit and healthy. Um, and you know, older people, um, the risk is higher. Um, brain surgery in, in itself is is very risky. It's you know, there's a reason that people say, oh, you know, it's not brain surgery. Said something's easy because. Brain surgery is really difficult. Um, one wrong move, and somebody, and the patient dies, or is paralysed, or loses the loses the ability to speak. You know, it, it's something. Um, so it's it's one of these things, and you you can basically point that out to him and say, look, he was older, the bleeding was too much, um, for his body, and somebody that was younger would live. Or how dare you blame me for trying to help? What you say is true. I apologize for my Lucius rash action. Seem to be it was somewhat out of grief and loyalty. Reasonable. I hope you understand. Mm. Yep, so. Yeah, that's me. But, yeah, let's move yes. on. Yes. We can't let Kaisar's death get in the way of the Legion's goals. Mm -hmm. Our scouts have reported that the NCR's President Kimball will be visiting the dam. This is an excellent opportunity to assassinate him. You are to meet with Kato Hostilius. He'll have more information on ways to eliminate Kimball. There we go. So you basically you kill Caesar, and then it's like, okay, let me just go straight into Arizona Killer, which is the opposing quest to you'll know it when it happens, where you have to go and assassinate President Kimball. Wally. So um, let's just put that up because this is gonna stand there anyway. Um, um, yeah, Caesar's dead, um, which means that you can take his displacer glove and his outfit if you really want to. But we're not going to do that, that's, um, so 
I'm just gonna let that self to save. Kaisar sleeps, but doesn't awaken. I fear it is only a matter of days before death claims him. You will answer to me until such a time as Kaisar is able to resume leadership. So even though he's not technically the second in command, he Don't is kind of in charge. Um, well, Caesar's incapacitated. Um, so this possession. Right. So yep, I've got my fancy wasteland doctor outfit, which isn't the cleanest looking for doing, you know, brain surgery, but here we are. Um, so we are going to perform the operation. Which I is thank you magic, for saving my life. Apparently. You're a warrior and a healer. A rare combination. Yeah. I trust this payment is adequate compensation for your troubles. Now, lest we grow sentimental here, the time for battle will soon be upon us. Legatus Linnaeus draws nigh. When he arrives, my legion will assault Hoover Dam. In the meantime, the profligates have prepared a welcome gift for us. The president of the NCR intends to visit Hoover Dam. I'll do it. That's what I like to hear. One of my frumentari has set up camp near Hoover Dam. His name is Cato Hostilius. Go to him. <laughs> He'll have further instructions. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's us again. So, what do we actually want to do? Probably speech maxed out. And then. Um, yeah, so oh, now Caesar is fine because, you know, we're so good at brain surgery that we healed him in an instant and there's not even a scar. Um, that's just how good a surgeon we are. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, in real reality, that kind of procedure could have taken 12 hours, Kaiser potentially lives. longer. Um, you know, it's uh, a little very complicated business, but Caesar's alive, we saved him, we've removed his brain tumour, um, and next time we are going to be tasked with uh, assassinating President Kimball. So, I mean, this is the kind of person that you would want operating on your brain, right? Um, it's a look. But, uh, yep, yeah, so... Um, it's it's an interesting one. I say the Brotherhood... It's all just a wee bit weird. I think the, the, the kind of dialogue where they're just like, how did you get in here? And it's like, you, you dragged me in here. That's how I got in here. Um, you know, it's, don't, don't just unlock the door and drag people in if you don't want people inside your base. Um, and then the fact that you just go in and set off the self-destruct and run out and charge past them and they all just stay in there anyway and allow themselves to be exploded. It's, it's very strange. But Brotherhood is out of the picture now um, and we have saved Caesar and um, treated his brain tumour and then of course there's um, alternate universe sub C1 where we killed Caesar um, during the surgery. Um, you can also do that by attempting the surgery but not having enough medicine skill and then you'll die because you don't have the skill um, to, to save him properly. Um, and then you can basically lie to Lucius and say, look, not my fault, he just wasn't strong enough for, you know, that kind of thing, um, which makes sense because it is, as I say, these kind of things in real life, there's always a risk with any medicine, any medical intervention, any surgery, anaesthesia. Um, nothing is ever 100% safe when it comes to these things. Um, that can be hard um, sometimes and you know it's always one of the worst kind of situations is when you know I've had a, we've had an animal in for you know routine procedure that was apparently fit and healthy um, and you know there was no indication anything was wrong and we you know it's always a policy that they would have a full Some of physical health check and things before um, they again. have their procedure just to be sure um, but even with that, and you know, no matter how careful you are, no matter how high your sort of standards of care are, there's still occasionally going to be something unpredictable happens and something goes wrong. Um, no matter how experienced you are, no matter how careful you are, and I say no matter how high your standard of care is, how thorough you are, 
sometimes it's the thing about biological systems is that you know um people talk about like oh you know this this is uh like with the, the whole argument with trans people that you can only be Kaiser xx makes. or xy but that's it's never that simple there there are people that are xxy there are people that are just x um chromosomes the and chickens having the two sex chromosomes being the same makes a male and them being different makes a female it's not it is not that simple um in the science and there, there's no such thing in biology as a hard and fast rule that's unbreakable that has no exceptions that just doesn't happen in biology there's always going to be outliers there's always going to be exceptions to the rule i mean look at the duck-billed platypus which is a mammal that produces milk but has no nipples um has venom and lays eggs um it's just like somebody has just played a random dice rolls for features for that animal because and, and it's just like leftover bits of everything else they're so bizarre um and that that's the thing is that you know like there's literally no other mammal on the planet that lays eggs but the duck bill platypus does but it's still a mammal um it, it's just bizarre and that that's the way biology works is that there's there's no such thing as a, a rule that does not have exceptions physics has the rigid rules and laws that are essentially unbreakable but even then you know it can be questionable but when it comes to this sort of biology and it comes to physiology and medicine and surgery and things and we're intervening when we're practicing medicine of any kind, we're intervening in sort of natural processes to prevent suffering, to prevent death, um, to improve quality of life for both people and animals. And and the thing is, is that there's there's always going to be a risk. I mean, I've I've been on so many different medications, and some of them have had some pretty horrendous side effects. Um, when I started on methotrexate for my psoriatic arthritis, which is a it's a, a drug that's used as chemotherapy and things. It's it's um, you know so it's not very nice on your system. Um, and I was only to take the the dose once a week. And on the label, it had them all caps. Do not take every day. You will die. Literally, like Far you away. do not Go take this Kaiser. tablet every day. It will kill you. Um, and <laughs> it, it was really unpleasant because the biggest kind of most common side effect of the tablet version is nausea and it was horrendous I could barely eat anything um, because I, I felt so sick and I have a metaphobia I can't cope with vomiting I, I really don't cope with it at all I can just about tolerate it with dogs and cats because I didn't really have much choice as a vet and a cat owner but when it comes to humans, I can't cope with other people vomiting. I can't cope with me vomiting. Um, I really, so it was really, really, really unpleasant. Um, but then I switched to the injection version Kaiser of that, needs. and that was much better. So it's yeah, and and this is the thing, and especially you know when it comes to cancer treatments, chemotherapy, and things, is that humans can accept the the risk and understand that there's going to be side effects that's going to make them unwell, you know, it's causing hair loss, um, gastrointestinal upsets and things like that. But we can accept that um, because we know that, it, you know, the, the benefit of, you know, potentially getting remission or getting a cure for cancer outweighs the, the side effects and things like that. But you never know how one particular individual is going to respond to a medication until they take the medication. It's, um, you know, every single individual is different and there's individual variation on all sorts of things. Um, and it's got to be, I mean, you know, sort of treatment surgery, especially in this wasteland, has got to be more risky than it would be, um, you know, in the pre-war world where you have a nice clean hospital where you can disinfect everything um, and sterilise everything properly because I don't know how many places around here have got working autoclaves and, and um, you know that kind of thing yeah. so you'd be left with like 
alcohol, I guess, you know. Um, but even then, it's not like anybody's, many people are really brewing more whiskey and vodka and things like that. So potentially that's going to run it as well, especially because a lot of people want to drink that stuff. But it's, um, yeah, interesting one. But anyway, we have, we have um, destroyed the Brotherhood and we have saved Caesar. So we're definitely not on the, the right side of history in this universe, but here we are. Um, so next time we've been given the quest Arizona Killer, um, where we have to go and meet Cato Hostilius um, and make arrangements to assassinate President Aaron Kimball of the NCR. So. Um, that should be interesting. I'm assuming that um, Kato's going to have some kind of disguise because NCR are not my biggest fan and that is why the, the ranger um, that the Brotherhood sent me to deal with, it's weird that there wasn't even an option to say this, but um, I'm an enemy of the NCR now so I had no option to resolve that peacefully um, because he was immediately hostile. So. He left me no choice, um, the only way I could deal with it would be to, um, to kill him. Or I guess wait till he leaves and then sabotage his radio and then he'll leave, I guess that's an option. But anyway, it's, it's done now. So that's us for now. Um, we are ready to go and be an assassin, we'll need to get a better outfit for um, the assassination. But um, I'm sure we'll sort that out next time. Um, so thanks for watching, I say I know things have been a wee bit delayed with um, me being unwell and things um, but the next um, instalment of Wasteland Entomology will be coming up on Thursday and um, I'm hoping that by Saturday I'll have the video about Vault 12 ready to go um, I just need to get a, a bit more uh, kind of footage and stuff organised for that so that should be coming on Saturday as well um, and then next week we will be picking this up again um, and we'll go and assassinate the president so and um, that'd be president Kimball by the way um, you know just because of uh, <laughs> I have to be careful what I say with real world events um, but yeah so we'll be assassinating the president of the NCR um, next week and then after that's done uh, it's pretty much time for um, the battle for Hoover Dam but for once we're going to be on the other side of it because we're working with the Legion so that should be interesting and um, so hopefully you'll be looking forward to that and um, as always any thoughts any comments and um, anything like that let me know um, we'll take a look at um, this and then because after we've done this run through we're going to be starting the NCR version as well and um, to finish this off um, and then I'll put together a video just sharing my overall thoughts on the, the main story um, and then we'll decide which uh, game's main story we look at next. So thanks for listening and I'll um, see you all next time. Bye.